Hey YouTube, my name is Dave. Welcome to my shop. What I thought we covered this time is uh, crosscut handsaws. So I got a few out here from my collection. We'll start off with this one. This is what you typically find at the big box store. This one is nine points per inch. It has what's called impulse hardened teeth. That means that these teeth are extremely hard. They stay sharp for a very long time, but I can't resharpen this saw. Okay, uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. The only thing I'll say is this is designed for a more modern four-fingered grip, which I don't particularly care for myself. But if that's what you have, that's what you have. Continuing on, this is a 18-inch, and this is designed as a, this is for somebody with smaller hands. Think of like a child. And uh, this one is 10 points per inch, 18 inches long, and yeah, it's just a, this is the one that I keep in, in this Lloyd kit that I'll be teaching from. Another 10 point per inch saw, this one is 22 inches long, and this one is, uh, I think this is a Simmons. Yeah, this is a Simmons. And um, yeah, I have this one sharpened more of a rip cut than a cross cut blade, but just want to bring it up for you guys to see the size. Uh, next one I have is a 24 inch saw. This one's a bishop. This one belonged to my grandfather. This is my main user. This is the one I like to use just to feel the connection with uh, the past with this one. But yeah, uh, a little bit more, mo getting more modern. This one's probably from the 60s. You have a routed handle. It's not quite as comfortable, but I can still, I mean, you can do a four finger grip. It, it fits a three finger grip just fine. I'll get more on the uh, grip here in a second. And then we have this one, it's a 26 trench, this is a distant, and this one's from the, the late 1800s, right around 1880, 1890, somewhere in there. And uh, yeah, it's 26, and um, this one's 8 points per inch, and yeah, you notice that I got these squiggly lines and all these saws. What I'm doing is I'm taking wax that you get from the grocery store. This stuff here, this regular canning wax. I cut off a little block, and what I do is just draw all this off. And that just waxes the blade, makes it slide through the wood a little bit easier. Okay. And that'll just make cutting a whole lot easier for you. And if you buy a big old box like this, you got a lifetime supply. Alright, so I'm going to set up a saw bench or a makeshift saw bench here and we'll get to cutting some wood. So I got a couple of five gallon buckets set up here and uh, de demonstrate some sawing. What I'd like to do is have a, a, a platform to, to saw on that's about knee height. And so this, this one here is going to be pretty too low for me. Uh, I measured this bucket earlier, it's about 14 to 15 inches high when I turn it upside down like this. That'd be perfect for somebody who's about five feet in height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another one on here. And I can tell already it's still gonna be too low because it's not quite coming up to my, to my knee yet. Okay. So let's get us a saw. Let's get us a piece of wood. Now earlier I made some marks on this uh, board. And uh, I took my square and a pencil and I just made a bunch of lines. Okay, square across. It's just to see how we're doing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put my board on my work surface here. In this case, this five gallon bucket. I want to put, push this knee against it and then lean on this, this one. My little saw, I'm going to put my thumb right on the line so I'm not cutting into my thing, fingernail. Draw back a little bit. Just start it easy. I'm gonna reach over here and grab my piece so I don't split it off. Nope, still split it off, okay. All right, so that's a little hardware store saw. So I'll go to, uh, this little guy wants, which is still going to be too short for me, but I'll give it a shot.
Okay. Let's see how I did. Oh, got a little off there, not quite plumb. Oh, I got this stuff here too. Oh, a little bit off, a degree or two. Okay, so that's my little 18 inch. Okay, so 22 inch, we'll try that. This height's really throwing me off right now. Right there, the toe of my saw, the end here is called the toe, it hit the floor. All right, so let's switch things around a little bit. So five gallon bucket to work. Um, I almost have to go to three high instead of two high. But uh, let me get these out of the way. This is my dedicated sawing bench right here. And um, this is size for me. So then I come up to it and you can see it's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, for me, um, I found that 20 inches, 20 inches high is where I want to be. And same thing. right here and that's all you do just to practice is make those lines and then uh, keep on going and checking yourself and that's pretty close actually that time so all right, so the longer the saw you can use, the longer you can keep, keep it cutting and stroke, the more accurate you're gonna be. And um, with this arm, you don't want it going back and forth too much. You really just want it to be the engine that uh, drives this thing. You're very light to begin. painted piece of pine. Pine can be some of the toughest stuff to work with even though it's so soft for some reason. But uh, it's good enough for practice. It's just an old painted piece that I got off of something. Uh, well, there I got off, split off on me, being careless. stuff really wants a splinter. I can't leave you guys like that. I'm going to grab this piece of oak right here and see what happens with that. Let's draw a line real quick. All right. So this wood is what, three, four times as hard as what I was using. We'll see what happens here. Which is 
fine. Okay, good deal. So in summary, um, crosscut hand sawing is generally done at a saw bench, okay? It can be done at the bench. I'll be demonstrating that later on. Um, get a hand saw that uh, will fit you so that you can take as long a stroke as possible. This is meant for a uh, child. It's just a darling little saw, though. I love to use it. So, I mean, there are still antiques out there. You can go to flea market and usually you have hand saws. What you're looking for is you want to sight down that hand saw and make sure that that plate is straight. It's a straight line all the way down, okay? And then uh, you don't want any broken horns, okay? That three finger grip, you'll notice I use a three finger grip. It's just that when you have that finger sticking out like that and you're pointing, it kind of points the saw where to go. It becomes very intuitive that way, where it's a whole lot easier to get an accurate cut with something like that. Whereas this saw, I can use a three finger grip, but I don't have the horns there to, to lock my hand in. So, I mean, the small one here, the horns barely fit. I mean, uh, in fact, they don't fit. It's, my hand's pretty crowded in there. But I can uh, get in there and make it work. Same thing here. This is a little bit bigger, but that's about right, okay? And then uh, let's go grandpa's old saw here. And you know, later on they routed the handles and not as pretty, not as comfortable. I mean, it sure ain't as comfortable as some, um, like uh, this uh, late 19th century distant here where you know, nice and contoured all the way around, you know, and just fits. And then my hands are between the horns. My hand is between the Horns quite comfortable that way, but uh, to see us, it's a big saw. But I mean, if I put four fingers there, it gets crowded. Okay, but it's not meant for that. It's meant to be held like this. And if you can teach yourself how to do that, you find out that um, it, it just becomes intuitive that way. To where wherever that finger's pointing, that that's where where the saw wants to go. And you'll see that a lot of woodworking tools are like that. We use a three finger grip. When we get to Stanley Bailey style planes, you'll see it's the same thing. Most most tools were, were, were designed that way to, to be used with, with your index finger sticking out. All right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you all watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, thank you.